Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, you're catching us right in the middle here of doing a, a quick little short video. Um, had some requests on how to, uh, or not how to, but when we're doing cast, uh, doing some demo videos on how to do uh, requested molds. So we're gonna do a few, maybe four or five upper extremity short, short videos on different molds that are requested by the providers. And we'll do, in that series later on, we'll do two or three or four videos of the lower extremities and those molds that are most requested today. Uh, we just finished doing a short arm here. And if you look at the short arm, you'll notice that I purposefully left it very, very cylindrical. Just, I left it round. And I did that on purpose. We all know very, very basic, basic casting stuff. You know that you can't put the cast on tight and you want to make sure that the edges are nice and soft. You want to make sure that they got full range of motion for their thumb and their fingers and the edges, the distal edges are soft as well. And, and they go below the palm or crease. And these are all the things we know and all the things that are in the textbooks. How to do an interosseous mold. Interosseous mold is when you basically, uh, when you're working with kids, we tell the kids that we're going to pancake the cast or we're going to flatten the cast. And as we're doing that and the parents are sitting over here watching us, we basically emphasize to the parents, we are not trying to make the cast tight. We are simply trying to make the cast flat. And what we do is we take the, the flat part of our hands, and, and even if you want to use the, the meaty part of your hands, and you basically, what you're doing is you're flattening the space and what it's called the interosseous mold because you're going in that space that lies between the radius and the ulna. You have that empty space right in there between the two bones, the radius and the ulna, and you have that gap that goes right down the middle. So you're using the part of your hands here to flatten out in that interosseous space. And what this does, this is probably, I gotta be straight with you guys, and you see me shaking here. I'm really, I'm putting a little bit of force on here. To be very honest with you guys, this is probably the most common mold requested by the providers. It is, I probably do this mold easily five or ten times a day, easily. And it, all it does is it takes away that oval, that round, that cylindrical kind of shape, and it diminishes a few things. The most important thing, medically speaking, the most important thing is it takes away the rotation. It, it, it decreases the rotation quite a bit and it lays anatomically correct with the two long bones. So one, by, by doing this inner osseous mold, you're decreasing the rotation of the forearm. The cast, of course, takes care of the rotation of the wrist. That's the first thing. You're taking care, you're, you're decreasing the rotation. And then the second thing, particularly when it comes to children, when you're working with peds, the second thing is if you take away that round shape as the cast starts to get loose, and it, we all know it gets loose from the padding getting flat and from the atrophy, uh, from the arm shrinking down, atrophy. But what happens is when you do that inner osseous mold, not only are you taking away the rotation, but you're taking away the odds of what we call pistony. So when you do, when the kids, when they, as they start to get towards the end of their cycle and it's almost time for their cast to come off, and I don't know, maybe adults do this too, I don't know, but you do this. And with kids particularly, when they have these little bitty hands or these little bitty wrists and they start doing this, eventually they're able to do this. And when they're able to do that, then we have a problem. So by doing that inner osseous mold, and there's very little I got left, I have left to do here because it's already setting up. But by doing this mold, you're taking away that pistoning effect as well. And that is how you do a nice inner osseous mold. Of course, when you're done, check the cap refill, temperature, sensation, Make sure they can, they can do the range of motion with their fingers. If you want to go ahead and demonstrate that for me. Thank you very much. Perfect. Check the circulation. Of course, talk with the patient. Make sure it's not uncomfortable. And that is your inner osseous mold. Uh, stay tuned for the next couple. We're going to do, uh, we're going to do like a, like an ulnar mold or like a, 
like an ulnar deviated volar mold. Uh, we'll do the how you do the coke can with the thumb and the opposing fingers. We'll do that with the thumb spica cast uh, later on as we work our way through through the length of the upper extremity. We'll do the the bicep type mold, and then we'll work our way down to the lower extremities as the videos go on. All right, you guys, take care. We'll see you soon.